Lift your heads and behold Emmanuel, God with us. Behold our God who comes riding in on an ass, the ruler who dares to be last rather than first. Friends in Christ, we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the holiest of all weeks in the church's life. It is the week in which Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as God's Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion this entry which began his saving work and follow him with a lively faith. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection in the new life. Grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you Through it all, through it all it is well
This is a reading for Passion and Palm Sunday that is going to begin with the 20th chapter of Matthew, verse 17. While Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and on the third day he will be raised. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When they heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. There were two blind men sitting by the roadside. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they shouted, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd sternly ordered them to be quiet, but they shouted even more loudly, Have mercy on us, Lord, son of David. Jesus stood still and called them, saying, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately they regained their sight and followed him. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. One of the things that really stand out to me in this passage is uh, considering what the steps were up to that point where Jesus entered the city and where he made this triumphal entrance and procession into Jerusalem. And so I wanted to start back a little bit to think about what set him up for this moment. And, and as you heard, um, the emphasis on his ministry leading up to that point was about serving others. It was about humility and selflessness and a ministry that was there not for folks to serve Christ, but 
but for people to be of service in the name of Christ. And that's uh, his own identity, his own model, his own way of being was being in service to God no matter what. And so he makes this uh, entrance into Jerusalem and he does so not on a great white steed, no inkling that this revolution he was starting was going to be some kind of military overthrow to, uh, the Romans were definitely not going to be worried about this person who was uh, <laughs> coming, riding a donkey in a colt. Um, it was a good show for a circus, I'm sure, but definitely not a threat to the Roman Empire. Um, and the scripture at the end says, folks were really uh, shaken by this. The uh, translation says turmoil. I think the original, as I recall, is more like shaken. They were on pins and needles. They knew something was about to break. Something was going to happen, uh, and they just weren't sure how or why or how it would come about. They were, uh, they'd never seen anything like this. We've never seen anything like this, or have we? Maybe we have. Maybe we have seen revolutions that start with small ways, uh, people who are peaceful and who are, uh, who have integrity and who, um, who follow a course that leads them in a way that others are able to see the wonder and the power uh, and the love and they want to follow. I like to uh, plan out services far in advance and uh, the reason I do that is partly because I uh, I like to spend some time with each scripture more than a week allows, and so uh, I like to do some prayers with praying with the scripture. I like to have a time to uh, just let the scripture come to me and uh, and to me to respond to it, and knowing that uh, every time I approach a scripture every time I come to it, it is a new experience for me. I am delighted when I find something different or new or when I uh, hear something that I haven't thought about before in scripture. I think those are uh, moments that I really enjoy. One of the other things I know about myself is that one thought can lead to another thought that can lead to a tangential thought that can lead to think thinking about things uh, that are totally off base and off course. And so uh, one of the ways that I pray is that I make sure I have a pencil and paper with me and uh, and I keep things written down. I can uh, call myself back but not worry that I won't remember again uh, what I've written. I can go down the line and see thought after thought, thought and response, thought and new thought. And uh, sometimes that works really well. Uh, sometimes it uh, it just is too many rabbit trails to be purposeful. So I also have a variety. I like to uh, color. I like to pray uh, with colors. Uh, or uh, sometimes I'll actually pray the scripture uh, in a pencil, and I'll draw I'll draw a picture of the scripture as I see it, and and I'll try to emphasize the things that I'm looking at. I usually don't save these, but I actually happen to have this picture. Uh, that I drew for a Good Friday service. What I was really thinking about on this season was how we honor a king, how that kingship was both a point of truth and also a point of ridicule, a ridicule for Jesus. And so um, that was one of the things I was really thinking on uh, when I was writing out this, uh, this scripture, drawing it out. In this Palm Sunday uh, scripture, I... Uh, I was just thinking all over the board again, and so I tried to give myself a little extra constraint, and so I uh, I found myself uh, uh, a handful of markers, colored markings, and I also uh, used a lot. I just printed out several types of uh, of these uh, pictures that I could color on. This is the one we posted. This one on Facebook, and so I tried to use these as a way of focus, as a way of thinking about the scripture, about uh, a way of getting lost in, in the scripture. As I was thinking through 
this passage and the events that led to Jesus' walk into Jerusalem and, uh, and his parade of palms through the city, I was really captured by the understanding of revolutions that happen uh, because people are being mistreated. People are not uh, valued and loved and cared for. I thought about mass incarceration, a lot of news about uh, why are we holding prisoners who don't really pose a threat to society and prisons where they are uh, easily contaminated with the coronavirus, that they're held together in, uh, in overcrowded situations and are uh, really people who are in peril from illness. Uh, that also got me thinking about those folks who have been arrested uh, in ICE raids and who are, uh, who are held in prisons and jails and containment uh, centers and who have not really been a threat to anybody and so this made my uh, mind wander to uh, a friend uh, Valeria who was a explore resident at the Hiram Manaway explore house uh, explore is a year of service program for young adults and Valeria is now uh, doing advocacy work and so I asked Valeria uh, if she would be interested in sharing some insight about her work and also about this Palm Sunday passage. And because uh, we are not bound by time or space anymore, we didn't have to bring uh, Valeria up from Arizona. Uh, we could come to her and she could come to us. Uh, and the only thing stopping us is technology, which it very nearly did stop us. This what? is what Valeria has brought us as part of her ministry and also as a part of uh, her devotion for this Palm Sunday service. Greetings, beloved congregation. My name is Valeria Bejar and I am the Disciples Immigration Response Specialist. I want to give a very huge thank you to Jeff Jackson for allowing me to have this space in this moment to to share with you all a short Palm Sunday reflection as well as a little bit of uh, context and information about the ministry that I serve. So very quickly I'll go into sharing where the ministry came from and where it, it originated from. So back in 2016 at General Assembly the church passed a resolution to become immigrant welcoming congregations. And out of that resolution, a partnership was developed between the Central Pastoral Office for Hispanic Ministries, as well as the Refugee and Immigration Ministry and the Central uh, Capital Regional Area. The partnership thought very thoughtfully about providing and creating a new innovative ministry that would be the on the ground working hands of being able to bring education advocacy and information and equipping congregations on immigration issues and really what this ministry has been doing since july of, of 2019 has been exactly that has been equipping congregations and really trying to create a cultural shift in the way that we understand the body of christ and the way that we understand how do we act and how do we nurture and protect those body parts of our greater body that are being affected and in this context being affected by harmful immigration policy, by family separation, by children being detained in detention centers and all of these immigration complexities. Um, so that's a little bit about the ministry and I'll go ahead and, and share with you all the reflection. So this reflection comes from a toolkit that was created by the Interfaith Immigration Coalition, which is a coalition that I uh, humbly am a part of, as well as our Reverend Stanley Ray. So we all collaborated alongside other DACA recipients and other uh, network participants in creating a Lenten toolkit. So I'll be sharing with you all today the reflection for 
for this Palm Sunday that we included in the toolkit. And this reflection comes very close to my heart as I myself am a DACA recipient and DACA protections are currently in jeopardy due to the awaiting of the Supreme Court decision as to whether or not the 700,000 individuals who have DACA will continue to have the protection or not. So I'll go ahead and share the reflection with you all. St. Matthew depicts the disciples' painful betrayal, desertion, and denial of our Lord. Jesus' most trusted allies wouldn't even stay awake to pray with him. They wanted to stand by Jesus, but self-concern won the day. And self-concern led to shame and weeping. This gospel passage pained me greatly. Like Peter, I swore to Jesus and myself that I would always suffer with him, stand up for him, and stay awake with him. Like Peter, I soon learned that there is a difference between romantic promises and picking up Jesus' cross when he arrives as someone whom the world fears or hates. Following Jesus' calls for a selfless, counterintuitive love that we must cultivate. Every day, we must choose sacrifice for the kingdom. Ultimately, Peter and the disciples realize they must withhold nothing to be followers of Jesus. Where do we stand in our commitment to follow Jesus? When DACA was crucified by fear, our documented brothers and sisters were betrayed, deserted, and denied justice. Let us withhold nothing in our pursuit of justice for immigrant families. Let self-control and self-concern lead to shame and weeping. Unite the flock, amplify our alliance, and embrace organized sacrifice so that DACA will be legislatively protective. This is how we follow Jesus. And indeed, let us on this Palm Sunday day be able to break down our barriers, break down those constructs that we have allowed as a church and as a body of faith to not allow us to really understand what it means to to nurture and and care for the least of our body parts um for us to be able to to learn and reflect on what does it truly mean to be the body of christ and how are we there for each other um i want to thank once again jeff jackson for allowing me to have this opportunity and i would most love to um if there is a need to be able to create a different video or a different way of engaging with you all and, and sharing a little bit more in depth about the ministry and about the work that is being done. And I just want to send all of my love and all of my joy and all of the positive energy all the way from Castor Grand, Arizona to you all today. Uh, thank you for listening and, and for being a part of, of this work and of the journey of being the body of Christ. Many blessings. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, we focus ourselves in gathering with you and one another in prayer. Turn our hearts again towards Jerusalem, to the life death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen.